Boys and girls, welcome back to our Sunday worship. Let's get ready to give our very best to God. Let's all stand up and praise together.
sure spend a lot of time in here, Connie. This is the only place I ever find you. I go plenty of other places, but you do seem to catch me in my coin room often. What are you and your coins up to now? Well, I want to polish them. I have to polish them. I need to polish them. So why aren't you polishing them? Because, in a much deeper way, I don't want to polish them. It's such a hassle. I have to get out the rag and then find the polish. I have to sit down with it and get in all the nooks and crannies of each coin. And Jake, I don't know if you know this, but coins have a lot of nooks and crannies. Hmm, so instead of polishing them, we're going to sit here and talk about polishing them? That's sort of the same thing, right? I mean, I really want them to be polished. I think it would be a good idea. But you don't want to actually polish them. Yeah, that about sums it up. I don't think that's the same thing. We can't just talk about a good idea. We actually have to do it. But I've thought about polishing them and talked about polishing them a lot. That's got to count for something, right? Nope, definitely not the same thing as actually polishing them. Are you sure? Positive. Actually, I have a Bible story that reminds me of this situation. Do you want to hear it? Sure, let's get started. Today we're going to begin with a little activity where I'm going to name a job or occupation and you're going to come up with a list of a couple of things that this person might do in their job. Okay, so let's begin with a doctor. What would a doctor do? What about a teacher? What does a teacher do? What about a firefighter? What does a firefighter do? I'm sure that right away you recognize that even though these people may have maybe a uniform or a license to have these titles, but it's also just as important to do the job that they have. What do you think of a doctor who doesn't really help their patients who's sick? They don't try their best to help someone who's sick. And what do you think of a teacher who comes to class every day and doesn't teach and just sits there doing their own thing? Well, guess what? It's the same for Christians as well. If we are Christians, there are certain things that we should do. And it's way more important than a job because this is our whole identity. So let's find out what I mean by this and what the Bible says about doing what we need to do as Christians. So let's open our Bibles to James 1 and 2. James was a leader in the Jerusalem church. He wrote a letter to the Jewish believers who had moved to many different places. He told them the way believers should live. James explained that talking about God and church is not enough. We have to do what God says, James wrote. Be doers of the word. If you hear the word but don't do it, you fool yourselves. Anyone who is a hearer but not a doer is like someone who looks at himself in a mirror, goes away, and forgets right away what he looked like. <gasps> God's word shows us the truth about ourselves. Anyone who hears and does the word will be blessed. James explained that people who really love God will show care to people too. God is honored when believers show their faith with actions. One way to do this is by helping orphans and widows people who have no one to take care of them. We show love in what we say and do, James also wrote. What good is it if someone says he has faith but does not do what is good and right? If someone is cold and hungry and you say to him, go in peace, stay warm and be well fed, but you don't give him clothes or food, what good is it? James said that in the same way. Faith without works is useless. Anyone can say that he has faith, but true faith is proven by good works. James reminded the believers that Abraham showed his faith when he obeyed God and got ready to sacrifice his son Isaac. Rahab showed her faith 
by risking her life to hide the spies in Jericho. God does not accept people because they do what is good and right. He accepts people who have true faith in Jesus. We can see that true faith when someone does what is good and right. Faith comes first, and then doing what is good and right comes next. James teaches us some really important truths in this passage. He tells us it's not enough to just talk about God and say that we have faith in Him. We need to actually put actions behind those words. But that's not always easy, is it? But God calls us not to just obey Him when it's easy. He calls us to do the right thing and obey Him no matter what. He wants our total obedience. So does that mean James is saying that our actions are what makes us Christians? No, we become Christians when we first choose to follow Jesus, and that's when we become children of God. But our actions show on the outside that we have made that choice, and it is the evidence of what we believe about God. It shows on the outside what we truly believe on the inside. In fact, in James 1, 23 to 24, it says, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. When you look at yourself in the mirror and notice something you need to fix, I'm sure that you would fix it. It would be silly to just see it and then leave it there and then forget all about it. Well, once we hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus, and we decide to follow him, one of the first things that happens is that we recognize our sins. You know, God's word becomes kind of like a mirror into our heart. Even though we are forgiven through Jesus' death on the cross, we still have to do our best not to sin anymore. Also, the more we learn about God's heart through the Bible, we also start to learn and recognize and realize what we need to do. Now, if we truly believe that heaven is our eternal home, then we would want to do the things that God wants us to do because we realize that that is way more important than trying to live for this world and to live according to the world standards. And even right now, maybe God is speaking into your heart right now and he's teaching you something or he's revealing to you what you need to do to become more like Christ today or throughout this week. But maybe once this worship is over, you're gonna turn around and forget all about it. If that's the case, then you are like this person who sees himself in the mirror and completely forgets what he looks like. God wants us to hear his words and then act on them. James wrote about a person who is cold and hungry. He explained that it's not enough to just tell them, get warm and be fed. We have to actually give them clothes and food. Learning God's truth is definitely important, but we also need to put actions to it. James said that faith without words is useless. Or some translations say, faith without action is dead. At this moment, I want you to pause and grab a piece of paper and then something to write with. Okay, so go ahead and grab it. So did you guys all get a piece of paper and something to write with? I want you to take this paper and try to make an airplane. I'm going to make the airplane that I know how to make. You got this airplane? Okay, so on one wing, I want you to write faith. And on the other wing, I want you to write 
works. Okay, so I have written here, faith and works. So I want you to try to fly this airplane one or two times and I want you to make sure to come back, okay? So the Bible is telling us that works and faith both have to be there. You know, sometimes people try to do a lot of good things, but without knowing Jesus, without really knowing what is really important, why we're doing the works, they're just going to get so tired because there's no way that we can do enough good deeds. We learned that it is only through Jesus, his death on the cross, that we have become righteous. So just trying to do good works and trying to be perfect will just be impossible because there's no way that we can be perfect. But at the same time, just having faith in Jesus and saying, hey, Jesus died on the cross for me. He saved me. I don't have to do anything. And not doing works is also not going to work. It's important to have both. So what if, okay, this is what I want you to do now. Pick either faith or work, and I want you to rip one of the wings, okay? Okay, and rip it off. Okay. Now, why don't you try flying this airplane? An airplane needs both wings to fly well. If one is missing, then it doesn't fly. It's not an airplane. In the same way, what makes us Christian is our faith in Jesus Christ. But it is also just as important to make sure that we show that faith with our good works. And James is saying that if we do not have the good works, the fruit that shows what we believe in our hearts, then maybe we really need to think about our faith. Right? So it is not a complete faith and understanding of Jesus Christ and the good news of Christ. So this is what it means. We really need both. If we truly believe in Jesus, then there should be good works that comes out of it. Sometimes it does take hard work to obey what the Bible says, but ultimately it should be a natural response to God's love for us and the expression of our love for him. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Jesus has given everything for us. He died on the cross and rose again so that we can be connected with God forever in heaven. So let's give back to him by being doers of his word and putting our faith into action. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. I want you to take a few minutes to just um, think about something that you can do this week. You know, we can't be perfect or we can't do so much at once, but you know, we can start with one step at a time. So this week, I just want you to do one thing that you can do better, that you can do this week to be more obedient of God's word. So I want you guys to take some time to think about that. And I want you to pray that to God and ask him to help you. Dear God, we thank you so much that you love us, that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, Lord. And because of your great love for us, we also are able to love you. And we pray that this week we will be able to show our love for you by obeying your word and becoming doers of your word, Lord. We pray that you will give us strength. You will give us that heart and that love for you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, let's have a time of offering. I want you guys to bring your offering, put it in your offering box, and I want you to do your best to give your whole heart to God as we sing this song. Let's sing together.
Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Connie, today's lesson sort of reminds me of something. Does it ring any bells to you? All right, all right, I get it. I can't just keep talking about polishing my coin collection. I need to actually do it. I'm glad to hear you say that. And I'm glad you're still here because you can help. Rats, I stayed too long. All right, hand me a rag and a coin. Let's get started. Your photos for the January quiet time calendar is due today. So make sure to take a picture of your checked off calendar that shows when you have done the quiet times and make sure to send it to me or you can send it to faithland at ncbc.org. February craft pickup will be next Saturday, February 6th from 1 to 3 p.m. So make sure to come and pick up your craft packets for the month of February. I'll see you there. Just a quick reminder to continue to go to your small groups today at 11 o'clock. So don't miss it. For any questions, please email at faithland at ncbc.org.